Welcome to Renovating a Vintage Horizontal Twin Cylinder Model Steam Engine, Part 4. At the start of Part 4, I'm removing the crossheads from the crosshead guides. When you do this, you only have to remove one crosshead guide. You don't need to take the lot off, because as you can see, it just swings clear and allows you to pop the crosshead out of the guide. And the same with the other side. In the fullness of time, these guides are all going to be removed for cleaning, polishing and repainting. But for the moment, I'm just putting the bolts back because I don't want to do this now. One part at a time. Treat each part as a model in itself and you won't go wrong. If you completely dismantle the engine and put all the parts in a box, it becomes a very daunting task to rebuild the engine. So for the moment, I'm leaving these crosshead guides just where they are and they are currently on my list of things to do. The crosshead guide blocks have been removed and put in a safe place. And it's time now to have a quick look at these connecting rods, and they are really horrible. Although very well made, like the rest of the engine, these are incredibly rusty, and make cleaning up the crankshaft look easy. So here we go. First of all, I'm using method one, the sandpaper method. This is quite coarse sandpaper to just try and get through the rust and see what we have underneath. It's at times like this when I would really like to point out, and often do, that it would be easier to make a new part, but then of course it would not be the original engine. And the idea of these renovations is not to remanufacture a complete new engine. So, I'm going to try a bit of modest power assistance. This thing is called a flapper wheel, and it's basically a load of flaps of sandpaper that spin round. And it's quite a good way of removing rust from metal. And these flapper wheels are quite good at removing rust and metal blemishes without removing big chunks of metal. At this point, I would like to put in a quick health and safety warning. Always make sure that you wear suitable eye protection and breathing equipment when using a thing like this. Also, a biohazard suit and an all-over condom is possibly a good accessory. There is yet another small drill accessory that can be used to remove rust from metal parts, and this is a small drum sander, but you have to be very careful with it because it will remove metal and you'll end up with chunks out of the rod. But I've used this kind of a tool for many years and I'm quite accurate with it. Another tool that can be very useful for this job is rather dangerous. This is a polishing spindle running at 3000 RPM with a hard wheel on it. A normal polishing spindle wheel is really a load of discs of cloth, but this is a very solid hard wheel and it really removes metal. Here's a softer one, it's a bit worn, I could do with buying another one, it's getting smaller every day. The polishing spindle wheel I'm talking about. But it's great for cleaning up gun metal parts like the big end brasses. I never wear gloves when I use these machines. I like to feel the temperature of the metal and I have a pot of water nearby so I can quench it when I need to. I generally do not like wearing gloves because I like to see where my fingers are. So by using a combination of the methods shown, you can convert something that looks like this into something that looks like this. And it's a good bit better. But please be very careful if you are using a polishing spindle, not just from the health and safety point of view, but you can ruin the work, particularly with hard wheels, they really remove metal. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.